diabetes. Well, back in 2009, the skeptical Raptors blog came out and said, vaccines cause diabetes, another myth refuted. And I just want to read to you a little, uh, a bit of their position. A lot of vaccine deniers believe that vaccines cause a lot of everything. And several claim that vaccines cause type 1 diabetes based on little evidence. And as far as I can tell, this myth is based on the research of Bartholomew Class and MD who pushed the idea that vaccines cause type 1 diabetes through some magical process that has never been supported by other independent evidence. Well, I'm going to submit to you right now written proof that, well, certain people, Merck at least, believes that certain vaccines can cause diabetes or have caused it. In fact, they believe it so much they put it in their literature. Here's the MMR, insert measles, mumps, and rubella. And if you... Go down, you got to read the whole insert till you get to the adverse reactions. And you just, and there's a lot of other interesting information before you get, before you even get to there. But here's adverse reactions. So here's the digestive system, pancreatitis, which is where the uh, diabetes lies into. It, it attacks your pancreas. And here we go, endocrine system, diabetes, right there. They list it right there as one of their side, as one of the adverse reactions. So, Merck, right here, good old Merck. Let's go to their the end here. Here it is, Merck and Company Incorporated, White House Station, New Jersey. There it is. On their own insert, they list that the MMR vaccine can cause diabetes. It's one of the listed adverse reactions. Now, they wouldn't list that unless they truly believed it because they could get sued if they didn't list it and kids were getting diabetes. So by doing this, they're able to they're able to circumvent that system. And the system to, you can't even sue vaccine makers anyway. The way the, they have this whole family court system that the U.S. government set up back in the 80s to protect the vaccine makers. And that's why you see the vaccine schedule jump in the 80s to where it is today, where kids are taking three, four times as many shots as they were getting before. Because now it's carte blanche. They, uh, you pay a portion of the shot, goes into a little fund that pays out people who are able to prove that they have vaccine damage. And let me tell you, it's not easy to prove that because they don't want to admit it. You can't uh, subpoena any people from the drug industry. It's set up to put the burden of proof on the parents, and it costs them a lot of money to get anything back, and that's to pay for a lot of these, um, you know, all, all the all the different therapies that the kids have to go through once they're vaccine damaged. So let's move on. Just wanted to share that with you, a little more vaccine news. I, and uh, I really, I didn't enjoy taking the phone calls on Friday from the people who were uh, putting out their vaccine horror stories, but it's something we have to do. And I, I think I'm going to do that once a month, put put out the call. I'm not going to tell you when it's going to be because I want to get the true people out there who've really had vaccine damage to share their stories because I think we need to keep putting these out. We need to keep putting a case out there for having uh, open disclosure of what is going on here in the United States with the vaccine schedule. Now I want to go, here's a tweet that Joe Biggs put out today and it's it's getting a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of feedback right now. Wanted... InfoWars looking for gay couple to get married at mosque to show the hypocrisy in America today. Here's the tweet right there. It's gotten it's gotten several retweets, 70 retweets, 66 favorites. Some people don't understand. They're like, is InfoWars pushing gay marriage? Urgh. No, we're not pushing gay marriage. In fact, we don't care if gay people get married or not. One thing it shouldn't be is an issue of the state. And let me tell you all you liberals here that think the state is your God. The reason the state put this in back in the day for people to get marriage licenses through the state, through the local governments, is because they wanted to stop interracial marriages. Okay, so they shouldn't even be involved with it. It should be a church issue. Churches should decide who they want to marry and who they don't want to marry. And if they don't want to marry certain types of people, then go to another church. Plenty of people can be ordained ministers and marry people. But it shouldn't be, I don't think it should be a state problem at all. So what we're looking for is a couple. And if, is Joe Biggs on the line right now? Do we have Joe Biggs ready to go? All right, so we wanted to... Put this out there and see if we can find a couple who wants to get married. We want to go film it, have them go to a mosque and try to get the, the, the religious leaders at the mosque to marry them. And they won't do it. OK, they're going to refuse to do it. And we're going to see if the state will step in and then maybe say, hey, you know, you have to marry these people. And but they won't do that. They're going to say, hey, it's multiculturalism. We have to allow the Muslims to have their religious freedom. But if you're a baker and you don't want to bake a cake for a gay couple, well, we're going to fine you. We're going to throw you in jail. We're going to take your business. If you don't want to issue a marriage license, we're going to put you in jail. We're going to show the hypocrisy there because I think if people want to get married, more power to them. And as long as you're if you're doing it for the right reasons and not the wrong reasons. But, Joe, what have people been saying about this on Twitter? It's going to be very interesting. Like you said, there's a lot of people who are 
confused at what we're trying to do here. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see how the reaction is from the state. And like you said, the state shouldn't have any involvement whatsoever with this this marriage. That should be left up to the church. So it'll be interesting to see how they're treated and if they will be punished, you know, the church, in a sense, for denying them. Because we saw the, much like with what Kim Davis out of Kentucky, she's just now being released out of jail. I'm watching it live on Fox. And she refused to uh, give out, uh, you know, gay licenses for marriage because of her beliefs. I think it should be purely left up to people like that. For as many people who don't want to do that, there'll be people who will. So just go to another group. That's my thing. Exactly. And here I pulled this article up from 2011, uh, Lou Rockwell, The Racist Origins of Government Marriage in America. And you should read this. This is why it was all set up to make sure that different races don't mix together. So it's the government that came out and was, it was being racist about this. Yeah, so, my girlfriend's Guyanese. I mean, she's from South America. So, I mean, that's about as interracial as it gets. There you go. And, and, and so... But then they want to go and force other people and say, it doesn't matter what your religion is. And that's why I want to bring people to a mosque, because um, it, Islam, Muslims are against, uh, they're against gay people. They're definitely against gay marriage. Oh, uh, they'd be against two uh, lesbians getting married. Oh, that, that, that would be even worse in their eyes, I bet. Yeah. I hey, mean, guys, it, what, what did y'all just pull up there? That was a, a Wikipedia on, it was a marriage, Loving versus West, West uh, Virginia. It's a landmark civil rights decision in the United States, which... In, invalidated laws prohibiting interracial marriage. That was in 1967. Well, there, it took a long time. And here's another, it's just, it just shows you, yes, there, there was racism in the United States and it's slowly changing, but you can't make people not be racist. If you try to do that, you're only going to create pushback. Anytime you try to force somebody to do something they don't want to do, you're going to receive pushback. For the most part, people aren't as racist as it used to be. You know, yeah, you're going to have some racist white people, racist black people. That's going to exist. It's going to be out there. But for the majority, most people are not that way anymore. You know, I sit down, I'll have conversations with people. I was hanging out with this older guy. His name was Sterling Johnson, older black guy. And he said, you know what? He says, I get very agitated when people say that the racism is bad. It's really prevalent nowadays. He said, just think 50 years ago, you and I would not be able to sit at this bar, me being a black man, you being a white man, and share a drink together and have a conversation without me being harassed. He said, the fact that I'm here right now and not one person's bothering me shows that we've made progression as a country. Joe, I'm interested. Has anybody contacted you yet with our proposal of wanting to get married at a mosque? Um, no, I haven't got anything yet at this point in time. A lot of people are just kind of, they're, they're, they're wondering if we support the state uh, being in charge of marriages. We're saying, no, it has nothing to do with that. We're just showing the hypocrisy behind all of this, why Christianity is being attacked for holding their beliefs, for not wanting to do that. Meanwhile, are these, will this group be attacked just as well if they deny, or will they just let it slide and go by? And, and I bet if Mark Dice went out and did a video, Mark, if you're listening, um, and went out and asked people, hey, we want to force the local mosque to, we're going to do a, uh, to force them to marry gay people. I wonder if the liberals would go, well, no, it's their religion not to do that. So we have to respect it. I guarantee or, or that's if they what will would say, Or if they'll say, no, force them, you know, because they like forcing everything on everybody th via petitions. So yeah. who knows? We showed that video earlier um, about how the uh, the liberals wanted to ban the Bible out of Amazon.com and uh, and Barnes and Noble, and only one guy stood up and really got got in Mark's face. What did you think of that guy who got up in Mark's face? Did you see that? No, I haven't had a chance to see it. Yet. It, it it was great to see one person who wasn't awake who had, had the glasses on and could see. And just go, hey man, what are you doing? Everybody else is just blindly signing it, or they go, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not interested, and just kind of shuffle off. And they uh, they weren't too interested in uh, in in pursuing that line of questioning any further. So, uh, yeah, if, if people do want to get married, if we get, can't find a couple to go over there and who, you know, seriously want to get married, we'll definitely, we want to shoot it on video, show people the hypocrisy behind it, because that's where we can have the greatest effect, I think, in showing how different people are treated differently. And that's wrong. I mean, everybody can agree. We want to treat everybody the same. So you can't have some groups getting preferential treatment over others. When you do that, it's only bad things that are going to happen. Uh, let's see. I'm going to... 
take phone calls since we uh, we got a couple more minutes before we go to break. What do we got, like a minute left? One minute. Jason, I'm going to let you start with your uh, question, and uh, we'll finish it up. We'll pick it up at the end of the break. Thanks for Joe Biggs for popping in. Jason, what is your question? Hey, how you doing today, Bobby? Doing, Love this show. Doing good. What What is your question? You got refugees, solutions, jobs, and a phone app. Yeah. Well, you know, you got all these people migrating, and, and it's happened over to, for, for the, since the dawn of time. People have always migrated. But the problem is what's, what's causing them to migrate is more than likely ISIS uh, or Al-Qaeda, if you want to call them ISIS. Uh, or our creation is what you could call them as well, the U.S. creation. Oh, yeah, and we, and we openly fund them. I mean, how, how do they get them nice tundra trucks? All right. Hey, Jason, hold that. We're going to be right back with you. It'll be the final segment of Overdrive. This is Rob Dew with the Alex Jones Show in Overdrive, Infowars.com. Final segment of Overdrive. That's right. We're going to do this live from now on, the fourth hour of Overdrive of the Alex Jones Show. If you are listening to this on one of our different platforms via the, uh, the YouTube or if you're watching it on Infowars.com forward slash show, but you're not getting it in your local radio station, well, you know other people are missing out too. So call your local radio station, tell them to carry that fourth hour now because it's going to go on like this. Some people would replay the first hour. No, now you got the fourth hour. You don't have to get, hear a repeat of the first hour. And uh, and then we're putting this out on YouTube. PrisonPlanet.tv members can also watch it live. We want to thank those members out there. And also you can watch it at Infowars.com forward slash show. You can watch all four hours and then that repeats and repeats and repeats till the next day. Jason, finish up with your points there. You want to talk about refugees, solutions, jobs, and the phone app. Go for it. Yeah, uh, I think people are migrating just because of fear of dying from ISIS. Um, and a lot of people have came to America because we were the greatest country in the world. We were, you know, and it's slowly declining. Um, and also, I got a, one of my main points I wanted to point out was we have a huge working poor class. That that is just phenomenal. That yeah. the middle class is not can't even out out buy the top one percent. Right. And you know you get all these people that are coming in and getting handouts. That that you know I'm a hard working construction worker. I'm an electrician by trade. Mm -hmm. And I went into a guy's house that was on Section Eight, and he had three times as much food as I had. He had a nicer place. Nicer TV. Nicer I'm car. I'm thinking to myself, why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why am I working when he's this guy's over here getting it handed to him? Yeah. Well, you work. You work because you're an honest person and you don't like handouts. That's one reason. So I, you know, but I, I hear you. When you give people handouts, it encourages them not to work. Eric in New Jersey, go ahead. Hey. Uh, first plug is I love Survival Shield. My dreams are a lot more vivid when I'm on it, and I notice when I'm not on it. I love it. Uh, second solution uh, for all these refugees that are coming over here into this country, I think that what would be the ultimate silver bullet into the devil's heart would be if InfoWars started putting out all the information, including the magazine, in multiple languages so that we can educate all these people and begin converting them over to the liberty side and work them against the establishment. You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see a, uh, a Hispanic fellow do, like, read, play the Alex Jones show, but, like, translate what Alex is saying in Spanish, but just like Alex... I think that would be a mega, mega viral situation. And then other people do it. We have a Czech guy who does it, a Russian guy, and just have a different Alex Jones in every part of the world slamming their fist on the desk, you know, pissed off at the system. I think that would be, that's a great suggestion. Thank you for that. Uh, Steven, you're our last caller in Florida. You want to talk about Wi-Fi, cell, and health effects. Go for it. Yes, yeah, sir. And actually, if I have time, I want to talk about the vaccines issue, too. You know, if you go on YouTube, Several years ago, there was a video put out. And I don't know who did it. It was a controlled study, four locations around the world. You might have seen this, showing people with cell phones being situated on a table like in a cross shape. Oh, yeah. Popping corn. popcorn? Right. Yeah, and in every case, when they all rang up their cell phones, it popped the corn. So that shows you the effect it has on yeah. our brains. You know, Ted, Ted Kennedy died of a brain tumor on the same side of his head that he held his phone to. And you look at people the way they are with these phones. I mean, they're like a bunch of zombies. They're interfacing with their phone. 
and their brains being re- mm-hmm. rewired. You know, so it's no wonder they're acting like zombies. Yeah. Also, the um, lawyer for uh, I forget his name. I think it was Johnny Cochran. That's who it was. Johnny Cochran had a big brain tumor on the side of his head that he used the phone at, and he was using it back when they were.